Yo, I'm back again. What's going on? I wanted to talk a little bit about the mental health crisis that's occurring during this pandemic. A lot of people say that the economic hardships and the isolation, uh, the the quarantine, self isolating issues have caused a surge in mental health issues but i don't think th- that covid the virus the pandemic itself is the reason for the mental health issues i think that the virus is simply exposing a weakness in our social fabric And as it's coming to light, it is being manifested as mental health issues. We, as a society, have already failed in the arena of mental health. As I read an article, I I may post it, I may not, but I read an article regarding the mental health, uh, uh, the mental health um, centers and places like that. And they're reporting that they were already, before the pandemic, they were already hard to access and and they were already under strain before the the so-called pandemic. But now, all of a sudden, they're looking at it and they're saying, wow, mental health is important. Did you know that the male suicide rate was already high before the pandemic what do you think is going to happen after a major stressful widespread event now let, let's let me just use myself as an example and i and i'll be straight up truthful with you before the pandemic happened i didn't I, I lived in a town center area. You know how they have those new, those relatively new apartment buildings that they place on top of shopping centers and town centers where people can conveniently go downstairs and grab their chicken tiki masala that's overpriced. <laughs> I lived in one of those areas. And I remember when I lived there, there was always some kind of nightlife going on on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays. Was happy hours that were late. I could hear people cussing and fighting outside of my window sometimes. It was very uh, annoying at times. But nevertheless, it was there. It was there from it was there for my disposal if I need to, if I wanted to partake in it. What I find now is that so basically let me just give you my routine i would i used to uh, go to work come home work on my own private projects um, that revolve around my literaries and my analysis make my youtube content comment on things and then start the day over and do it again then on the weekends i would do some uh, i would do my um, my my chinese courses i would do some personal training and then i would just um, Rinse and repeat. So, for me, when people talk, when I talk to people about where I live, they said, "Man, if I live where you live, I would, man, I would be on happy hour every every Thursday, Friday. I'd be going out, you know, piling that chicks, da 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 da." But that wasn't really my jam. So, before the pandemic, I was kind of like living. A somewhat quarantined life in the sense that every all the movements that I made were economically were economic motions. In other words, I was when I made a move, I went, okay, I went to the grocery store, I had a list, I knew I wanted to buy, I bought my shit and I got out. And I came and I went back to my crib and I worked on my stuff. I think the most I think the thing that's affecting me the most during this so called pandemic is that the things that were available to me before are not available and so my options are my options are smaller and because my options are smaller 
there's a higher amount of uncertainty that the remaining options that I have will continue to be feasible. I think this is the this is the mental um, the mental what's that what do they call it cognitive dissonance cognitive dissonance if you will that I'm experiencing during this pandemic. But other than that, it doesn't it doesn't really change the way I live my life. Aside from having to wear a mask or choosing to wear a mask at times. But other than that, I don't really think that it really changed my life much. It did change the gym aspect of it uh, because they started closing the gyms. And so I had to, I had to resort to uh, doing calisthenics and, and actually, you know, I think that was really good for me in a way. See, there's a lot of hidden blessings in this because one thing is it, fo- it got me focused in the body, body weight exercises. I actually got some muscle ups, which I like. I, I, I love watching the guys do the muscle ups online. Uh, but my, um, but my, my, my muscle imbalances and such, it's possible that I was, you know, I was ego lifting a lot. You know, not a lot of guys, a lot of guys ego lift. But all in all, I would say that I have not really been affected mentally by the pandemic, except for the fact that the options I had in the past that were available to me are not available now. So my whole question about the pandemic is how many people before the pandemic didn't have a problem with mental health, had healthy relationships, a healthy family interactions, a normal work-life balance. And then with the, with the emergence of COVID, saw their life go into inba- a mode of imbalance versus how many people already had issues before the COVID came. And the COVID simply uncovered, simply unveiled the issues that they already had. And now it's getting reported, kind of like how they say uh, men are also domestic, are also uh, victims of domestic violence, but because they don't report domestic violence, it's not in the stats. So, you know, and, and there's no way, and I don't think there's an arbitrary way to extrapolate on how many men might be, domestic, might be victims of domestic violence, but haven't reported. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Judged by six rather, I mean, judged by 12 rather than carried by six. First of all, we all know that once a woman loses respect for you and, and starts to physically enter you and physically abuse you, you know that you've already lost the game a long time ago. And we also know that the double standard for, you know, punching a bitch back for hitting you is also prevalent in the society, even though they say they want equality. Now, here's what I say. I would be damned if I had a kid and I would want my kid to be some punching bag for someone, man or woman, male or female. It's one thing to come home and punch your girl because she made, you know, she made rice aroni instead of like, instead of mashed potatoes. It's another thing for you to be trying to like, yo, like she's trying to hit you with like some dishes or a pots and pans or some shit. And in the process of trying to restrain her arms, you cause wrist marks. She calls the cops and then the cops see the marks on her wrists, determine that you're violent and then they chalk up another statistic. And then she gets to go on and say how she's been abused emotionally and physically and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying this is gonna happen to everybody. And I'm I'm sure that a lot of you guys already know that you can already read the signs. You can already, there's signs. You, You know, we all know about the signs, the yellow alerts that they say. My man, Jack Canfield told me. We all know about the yellow alerts. The question is, do we choose to heed the warning? Do we choose to 
say, you know what? She just kirked out on me in a public place with draw, jaw dropping attention in my direction. And therefore, I need to prepare to make my exit from this toxic relationship. Or do we say, nah, dog, I can't get no better than her. Man, her poom poom too good. I can't get no better than her. I'm going to stay. She just loved me. That's why she act crazy. Now, if you're, not, if you're the last person, then you're, you're bound to end up in some kind of a toxic violence relationship. Because what you're doing is you're making a choice to stay somewhere that's not good for you because of certain things that you could feel are convenient, like getting some in-house, t- an in-house tail, rather than looking out for your own mental health. So that's just one aspect. Now, there's of course, there are women that are getting abused in, in relationships. And so what they're doing is they're using these statistics to say that COVID is, is caused dom- uh, an increase in domestic violence. I don't think COVID has caused an increase in domestic violence. I think COVID has caused an increase in domestic violence reporting. I think COVID has it caused an increase in the amount of, of inconvenience there is to leave an abusive situation and the economic implications if, you, if, you, if, if that person depends on the other person as a breadwinner, then yeah, there's that. But other than that, I don't see how I don't see how the virus itself could be more of a, a more of a driver of domestic abuse than say alcoholism, right? Like let's take let's take the alcoholic and let's just take the, the, the stereotypical alcoholic, you know, man from El Salvador that comes home and beats his wife because he's drunk. But he's not beating his wife because he's drunk. He's beating his wife because the the roles that they play are he has he has a he has a uh she has a poor me type she has she has a uh enabling personality and he has a domineering personality and so she doesn't value herself so she stays there and then he doesn't value himself or her so he could he 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 wants to control Deep down, there's a fear that she's going to know that she's worth something and leave. So in that aspect, you know, alcoholism could just as much be a catalyst to domestic violence than the coronavirus. Because alcohol is still available in the coronavirus. Like, you know, I was reading about how they said alcohol um, substance abuse is rising. But the question is, why are, are, is the government keeping the the government state sponsored alcohol a uh, state sponsored uh, liquor stores open in the covid if they know that number 1 substance abuses are on the rise and number 2 people in domestic situations can't get out of them easily and number 3 people that drink alcohol and enter these domestic violence situations will make it uh will make it more extreme why not close down the Liquor stores, no, because that's big business. That's why. So everybody knows what's up. That's why a lot of people are saying it's a pandemic. It's planned. Now, I can't really speak on that, but I can say that there's a lot of in- new industries that are coming out that are actually benefiting from the coronavirus uh, pandemic. But the bottom line is, we'll never really know. We'll never really know. What, because there's too much, there's too much information, too much, too many, uh, too many factors to figure out whether or not the pandemic is the cause or is simply a re- a revealing, uh, like, a, a, I don't want to say catalyst, but I want to say, um, well, you know what I'm talking about. Is a coronavirus simply uncovering the problem that we can see it in a mic under a micro I mean under a magnifying glass or do we always have this problem and or is it or is it just now emerging so anyways all oh, my brothers and sisters be safe peace